Hello and welcome to another video by the AM Academy. Now in previous videos we've already looked at several Shining 3D products, such as the Einscan SE or the Freescan UE7. The Freescan UE7 was a handheld blue light laser scanner. And uh, today we're going to look at something a little bit similar to this, but still quite different. So today I have here the Einscan HX. It's another handheld laser scanner by Shining 3D, but it's got a couple of key differences. So this one has two different scanning modes. It either uses visible LED light or blue light laser lines. Its field of view and scanning speed, as well as the accuracy, are a little bit less than that of the Freescan UE7, but it is considerably cheaper. So, uh, you know, there's always that little trade-off that you have. But a huge benefit that it has is this combination of regular LED light and blue light laser light. This lets it not only scan surfaces and pick up textures such as colored models and stuff like that, but with the blue light laser light, you can also scan reflective, black, shiny surfaces, uh, things that 3D scanners traditionally struggle with. So without further ado, let's have a look inside and see what actually comes in the box. And uh, as the other Shining 3D handheld scanners, it also comes in this really nice rugged case. Uh, I quite like these. Uh, there's very little that can happen to the scanner on the way once it's packed into these. First up, we have the calibration board, uh, which is white on one side. And then on the inside, we have a black and silver calibration pattern. And there's also a guide uh, included in this. So we'll put that to the side for the time being. Now what else we got? Of course, we do have the standard USB cable. It's four and a half meters long, so it provides you with quite a lot of available movement. There's a uh, USB stick with the software, of course. There is a packet of markers. So for uh, especially the laser light mode, you do need to use these, uh, stick them all over your scan, uh, the object that you're trying to scan, and then the scanner will be able to pick it up. There's a variety of uh, power plugs, depending on your country's outlet. I will be needing the German one. Of course, a power brick that I can put this onto. And then, most important, the scanner itself. And now you can see the way this is set up uh, is that it has an upper and a lower part. And uh, this upper part is actually where the uh, visible LED light comes from. This right here is the color camera to pick up textures. And then it also has the blue light laser. And then it captures all of this in order to try and, well, pick up the model as best as it can. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put this right here. So that's everything that's in the box. I'm going to put this aside. Once again, close it up, put it over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug everything in. And after that, we can start calibrating and then actually scanning a number of models. All right, so I've got everything plugged in. Plugging the scanner in is real easy. Every cable can only go one place. Uh, there's a USB cable and a power plug in the back of the scanner itself. The power break obviously goes into a power outlet with a USB cable connecting to the computer. So now that we've got this done, it is time for a calibration. And that's where this guide comes in. It is designed to tell you how and at what angle to place the calibration board on your table. So it's exactly supposed to line up with that angle that is on this little uh, guide sheet. In addition to that, there are these uh, rectangles at the bottom. These have to face towards the table. You can see there are none up here. There's a rectangle down there. You want these facing downwards to ensure best calibration results. So I'm going to blow up the software a bit so you can see it better. And you can see there's a quick calibration, a standard calibration, and then two more components, the laser and the white balance. Now, uh, I would recommend doing a standard calibration each time you bring the scanner to a different environment. So different lighting, uh, whether it be natural or artificial lighting, whether it is more or fewer lamps all around. So that's what I'm going to do now. And then in addition to that, uh, every time you notice the accuracy might drop a bit, or um, I don't know, maybe even every time before you scan, uh, depending on how important the, the very high accuracy is to you, you might want to do a quick calibration as well. So, as I said, I will select the standard calibration and then the uh, on-screen instructions will actually tell me what to do. So first up, I need to tilt the scanner sideways and then go close 
press the start button and then move slowly but surely away from the center. So just like that. Uh, rotate it by 45 degrees. Do the same thing over again. And you always want to try and keep that little plus in the center uh, within that uh, white rectangle. So like that. Now hold the scanner upright. So I just follow the on-screen instructions, do everything that the software is telling me to do. And you can see how I always need to start close, and then I need to move farther away. And the uh, bars at the side of the screen tell me what distance I have already completed and what distance I still need to do. So one last time, I uh, rotate it all the way. So I've gone through a, an entire 180 degree rotation now. And I just move away again. And you can see, you don't need to be 100% accurate with the rotation of the scanner, how you hold it, how you do it. Uh, the important part is that you always try to keep that plus sign in the middle and move slowly from close to far away. You can also move from far away to close. I just find it easier this way around. Then the uh, software will calibrate or will calculate uh, the calibration results and hopefully give us a good result. So we've got that progress bar on our screen, 98%. I'm hoping that it'll say calibration success. Sometimes it happens that it'll say failed. In that case, you need to uh, maybe adjust the lighting. If everything was too bright, that can happen. Uh, adjust some of the lighting, do it again. Maybe you shook too much, maybe you lost the little plus signal. Um, something like that can cause errors during, during the calibration. But in our case, it succeeded. You can see it even tells me my calibration deviation. Then I click next. And next up is a laser calibration, as it says on the top. And I, uh, I'm kind of in the way of what I want to show you with my, with my camera image, because it shows that the calibration board now has to be placed this way, so that the white surface is facing up. That is what's needed uh, for the uh, laser calibration. And then I take my scanner and hold it above the white surface. And then once again, I start the calibration by pushing the start button on the scanner. And I once again have all these little squares at the side of the screen that turn green. And uh, now I need to move closer and fill out each one of these squares. And you can see beautifully on the uh, camera behind me, uh, the laser lines that it's actually scanning with. So you can see how many laser lines there are. And uh, basically they are what pick up your model. So that's the last square. Done. That would be laser calibration. Succeeded. And the last step now is a white calibration, the white balance. And for that, you want to hold the scanner above the part. And what you basically need to do now, and this is always not quite clear, uh, you need to move it so that that blue square is exactly the center one. So I need to get a bit closer. And then you need to hold it steady as it takes two pictures. And if you move, while it takes those two pictures, your white balance calibration is going to fail. So you just need to move carefully to that center point and then hold steady as it takes those two pictures. That'll guarantee that your white balance succeeds. And after that is done, we have now calibrated the scanner. The software knows exactly uh, what to do and we can start scanning. So whenever that is time to do this, you pack up the guide inside the calibration board close it down, and ideally you would put it back into the case, but because I don't want to open it up right now, I'm just going to put it right there. What you need to make sure is that you do not damage this calibration board, because once that is uh, damaged beyond repair, you will actually have issues calibrating your scanner, thereby lessening the accuracy of your scan results. So I hope that was clear. If you do have any more questions or comments, please leave them below. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Uh, do subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. We'll be mostly talking about 3D scanning, 3D printing, different machines, different applications. Uh, so stay tuned for any more of that. Yeah, so that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you very, very much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.